I pray, O oh Lord, that you may take charge of the minds of those who are behind it. We know whenever, Lord, that you are in the midst of anything, it runs smoothly. So we ask that your presence be in this place this morning and help that this project as it undergo, that it will be for the further of your cause. We bless your name this morning, O oh God. We glorify your name. And may we all here be blessed in your name and may we look forward for better things to come, not only in this community, Lord, but to the extended communities. So we bless your name this morning. We glorify you because you are God and you are God alone, and there is none like you. I pray that you may continue to bless the ministers of government. Lord, bless the leaders of this land, Father, that they may do wondrous things in your name. But we first want them to know that nothing can be done positively without you. And so we bless your name, we glorify your name, we recognize you as God in Jesus' name. Amen. So, local government and community empowerment. Um, Mr. James Perino, Assistance Operations Director of St. Lucia Social Development Fund. I see Mr. Ali Anthony, also a resident of Barbano and Claudia Vasco. Mr. Vincent Hippolyte, Managing Director of Water and Sewage Company Wasco. Mr. Clive Hippolyte, Deputy Project Manager, St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF. Mr. Patterson Abraham, Residents of Barbano, for Kako, this one resident. All invited guests, the media, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we are here to witness the signing of a contract between the water sewage company, Wasco, and the social development fund, along with the parliamentary representative of Barbono. If memory serves me right, the community of Plateau in December 2012 saw the launch of a much needed project the residents had suffered for years the unavailability of constant water supply to their homes and the community. The old 10,000 garden tank which served the community for ages was knocked down and the site had undergone some major work of major preparation for a new 150,000 garden imperial, imperial garden tank. Rotary clubs in St. Lucia teamed up with counterpart clubs in the United States and the Southern Caribbean to finance a $700,000 project that supplied drinking water to some 3,000 residents. So it stemmed from Plateau down to Lage, Bojis, Lawi Chicken Bark that we, we normally hear over the, the, the media when the parliamentary addresses parliament. The need for projects like these stretches beyond the boundaries of Plateau and into smaller communities. Fokako is no exception. And the next item on our short agenda will be Mr. Patterson Abraham to do some welcome remarks to the community. Oh. I want to take this time to say good morning to everyone. It, in, it is indeed a great pleasure to welcome you this morning on what is a very significant occasion in the signing ceremony of the Fork Hako Water Supply Expansion sub-project. This project has been in the planning stage for quite some time, for some months now, and I am indeed thankful to the St. Lucia Social Development Fund for once again coming to the aid of the residents of Babano, specifically those of Fork Hako, in meeting a vital need that is the supply of water in the homes of those who so deserve it. Many areas within the Babano district have been experiencing constant deficiencies in the supply of water, despite the existence of numerous catchment um, areas and rivers. Projects to address these shortcomings are proving to be quite difficult and consequently costly. Therefore, the residents of these areas need to rely on the goodwill and benevolence of voluntary groups or development agencies like that of SSDF to ameliorate the situation. Today's ceremony is a starting point in the changing of lives of some of the residents of Fort Kako, as this water expansion sub-project comes to fruition. The signing of this contract today will propel the works of the project at full steam. I would like to offer my sincere appreciation to all those who have contributed towards bringing this important project 
to this point and to which Wasco and um, SSDF the very best as they commence on the road to delivering this essential contribution to deliver water to our residents of the Four Kako area. Once again, I just want to say um, thank you and welcome to the most beautiful district on the island of St. Lucia, Babuno. So thank you very much. We at the SSDF are always excited for moments like these um, because it's a precursor to the actual implementation of projects that we think that are vital to the survival of communities. Um, the BNTF program, as you know, is, is subsumed within the SSDF, um, but it's also involved in some basic needs that we need to address in vulnerable communities. And for, for Kako, on this occasion, is one of such examples. Um, I have been advised that this water project will bring relief to at least 166 houses. And notice we say houses are not persons. So if you do the multiplications, you see how many other persons would benefit from that. As it stands now, there is water, pipe-borne water, but the pressure is a bit low. That doesn't allow for, for persons to be able to utilize the water on a regular basis. And so that project is very much something that we are encouraging not only in, in Fokaku, but in the wider society of St. Lucia. So it gives us great pleasure to partner with WASCO, which we have collaborated in the past with, to establish a number of those projects. Um, Babono is no stranger to that collaboration with WASCO and SSDF for a number of projects, including one, I think, that happened in Chasse some years ago. So we certainly want all the minds to meet, to have the best possible project at the end of the day. We certainly want to see greater community participation in the implementation and the maintenance of the project. As you know that the issue of water came into sharp focus after Hurricane Thomas and recently the trough on the 24th of December. We know how vital water is to our survival. And in fact, there's an often slogan, I think, which is used by Wasco, so I hope I'm not plaguing myself by saying that water is life. And so, um, and it's indeed important for life. Without water, we are unable to survive. And this is why this is treated as an extremely important initiative. And the SSDF has no difficulty in approving such an intervention at this time. So I want to, on behalf of the board of directors, um, the chairman has asked me to give those brief remarks on his behalf, and the management and staff of the SSDF to really show our support and appreciation for not only the residents who have allowed us to come into their communities, but the minister, the MP, I should say, who has welcomed us into her community, bearing in mind she knows the great gift that we're going to bring to her, and WASCO them, has, themselves for allowing us to continue that collaboration with them to bring relief for vulnerable people. I thank you. I will observe the head table. And I will observe also everybody in the audience here this morning. I am now wondering whether there's anything I should say. <laughs> because to me, you've said it all. And I will not repeat what you've said. You've said it so well. Except to merely say that I endorse it. And not just me, but Wasco endorses it. And to remind everybody that water is, in fact, life. It's very important. It's a precious commodity. Um, I think we have a duty as a corporation to ensure that we can bring water to everybody. And uh, when we speak of bringing water, we speak of bringing water to households. But you're quite correct when you say that if you multiply household by a factor of five or six, you get the real impact that you are creating when you bring water to communities. Um, make no mistake, WASCO takes its responsibility very, very seriously. WASCO, as any other corporation, has constraints. So if we were able um, we would have provided water to everybody in St. Lucia by now. So I'm saying so just to say that it is our mission to do so, Minister. It's just that we have to do it within the bounds of our ability. Um, and sometimes it is simply not possible because it is very expensive, as you know, um, and Wasco's work is on the ground. So when Wasco is bringing water anywhere, Wasco goes on the ground, and it's very difficult to go on the ground sometimes. Um, but it's, it's our pleasure to be here this morning, and I have with me Ali Anthony, who 
happens to be from this community. So there is no way he would not try to make this happen. <laughs> right? And well, okay, you heard that, Ali. So keep that in mind. Um, so as I say, it's a pleasure being here this morning to sign this, this document, this contract document. Uh, and we are looking forward to executing this project um, efficiently and on time. Uh, it is not the first, as was said by the <coughs> assistant director, and it will not be the last. And Minister, if you have more in your community, then come to us again. Oh, yes. We like doing them. <laughs> we, we do like doing them. So please come to us, and we will not, we'll not say no. Right, Ali? No. We're going to say yes. So come to us, we'll say yes, and we'll make it happen. So once again, it's our pleasure to be here to sign this contract document and to make it happen for the people of Babano and more so for Kako. Thank you. I just want to point to the historical connection between water and community development, water and social transformation. Because as you would know, every great community, every great civilization has been developed where there is water. Now, when you consider the name Fonkaku, if you make the translation, it is actually the Valley of Coco, which means that in valleys, you have water running, which I suppose would be the reason why you have a community in that area in the first place. But as we grow, as we develop, as we become modernized, the need for water to leave the rivers and the mars, the, and, you know, the ponds and the pools and so on, and to be transported into our homes becomes ever so important. And that is where organizations, agencies like WASCO come in. So I'm very, very happy that we are seeing the kinds of partnerships that we are seeing right now, the coming together of WASCO, of SSDF, of the Babuno Constituency Council, of the Ministry of Social Transformation, Local Government and Community Empowerment. We are seeing the, co the, the coming together of these agencies to make life better for the people of Babuno, for the people of Fonkaku. It is what this ministry, our ministry, is all about. Community empowerment. Because we must recognize the fact that it makes no sense talking about empowerment of people, talking about transforming people, if there is no life within those people. Because it is people who are alive and who are vibrant and who have a, a reason to live and to carry on with their lives in the communities that really need the water in the way that we want to bring it to them. Because we, as we said, we want to take it out of the rivers, out of the, the streams, out of the ponds and so on, and bring it into the homes to transform their lives and so on. And that is exactly what we are doing. We are transforming the lives of the people of Fonkaku by bringing water to them inside of the homes. So I really want to commend the various agencies for this coming together, this partnership. And partnership is very, very important into this, into this world, into this um, you know, governance and so on. Very, very important to have partnership. And I would like to commend all of those agencies who are coming together for, to, in order to bring water to the people of Fokaku, to the people of Babuno. And as the WASCO representative indicated, we are hoping that a lot more communities will benefit from that kind of partnership, particularly in the constituency of Babuno. So we look forward to that. And we look forward to um, people enjoying um, a better quality of life as a result of the, 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 this, initiative, uh, we, well, this initiative to bring water into the homes. Thank you very much. 
it's a great day indeed this is the day that the lord has made and so i am rejoicing because this project is coming to fruition it is where we want it to be and of course we're looking forward to the days and of course as i said and i look at the head table i am seeing residents of babano mr perino is a constituent and so is the acting minister so yesterday I challenged the ministers that in the absence of Minister Dalson, we could sign a few more <laughs> contracts to bring some goods to Wavono. Okay, so you know it would all be legal. So I shall challenge him again today to do some, let us sign some very, very valuable projects this morning. So ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great day to have this project being signed on today. And as I look at the information, um, if you know the community of Fonkako, I mean, down the hill, down to the river, and of course the community comprises of, you know, uh, elderly people, children who go to school, mothers and fathers, farmers, persons who work at the hotels, and of course it is critical, critical for persons from the Kako community because it's a lot, a bit of a walk from the main road. And can you imagine not having water if they have to access down at the bottom, which is the river, or other ways? And I know Wasco's had the problems of persons tapping into others' lines and so on. This continues to happen. And it's not that people not want to have their own meter and their own facility for themselves. They would love to have it. But of course, when that is not possible, you find a lot of illegalities would occur. And that is why I really want to commend this morning this collaboration with SSDF, with WASCO, and of course the other um, sponsors, funding agencies of CDB, to look at this water project for Fokako, which is in the range of $131,000. EC dollars? EC dollars. I just want to be sure about it. Okay, so it is um, that investment that we are making for the people of this country. And I know that the most important resource that we have in this country is our human resource. And as government, it's our responsibility to do all we can to protect this vital resource. And in protecting our resource, we must make water, quality water, accessible to our constituents, to our residents, wherever they live. And I see that the project entails installation of it's a four inch pipes, reconnection of existing um, connections to 66 households. So there's a reconnection process. And there's new connection happening for 50 households. And the construction of one fire hydrant with masonry vault. And I know this is a new thing, isn't it? this one down in the Fokako area to have a new fire hydrant. So of course, I am very pleased this morning um, to be here to, the, to witness and to participate in the signing. And of course, we look for that day when it will be completed. So we can say to the residents of Kako to protect and manage well. It's not just the idea of bringing water to communities, but we cannot afford to waste this very vital resource. As we bring it and we invest in it, $131,000, for some persons may say it's not important, the money is not, it matters because it affects lives. Okay, we cannot put a price on it, but when caregivers, okay, from the NICE project go to the homes of the elderly to cook, to, to, to bathe, to deal with hygiene, and there is no water, we have a problem. When a, a mother was a baby, newborn baby, and she has to do all what is necessary for this baby, it becomes a problem. When a mother who has five children to go to school every morning and there is no water in the household, there is a problem. And we all know when we wake up on the morning and there's no water, how infuriating we can get. Yes, that is true. And so I really, on behalf of the residents of, of, of Fort Kaku, want to say that we are going to make the commitment to really protect what we have, that investment. We are going to manage, and of course, it always comes with a bit of education and sensitization. It's not only the fact that the project comes, but what is the responsibility of residents. As government, as agencies, we will take our responsibility seriously, and as residents, and I speak as a resident as well, 
it is our responsibility to protect it. And so, um, as I'm very grateful to have present here uh, Mr. Ali Anthony, and I know I have been calling his phone ever so often to ask for advice and to tell him what's happening in terms of what is happening in Babylon as it pertains to water. And just yesterday I got a call from Debara that's a pump was damaged, and right away I'm calling Ali. Everybody who calls me, I call Ali. And so I will probably be calling Mr. Hippolyte, now that you know Babono, you've been welcome to Babono, you feel so comfortable in Babono, I can make two calls. <laughs> so I will be calling Ali and I'll also be calling you, Mr. Hippolyte. So water is life. And I thank you, uh, all the officers who, have been, who are going to be part of the project and who have started the project with us, Mr. Hippolyte, all the other technical officers who have been on the project, those researchers, and Mr. Patterson Abraham, I think, worked with, I think, uh, Ms. Jackie from SSDF to do a bit of research, and Ali Anthony as well did a little bit of research as to the need when we identified the need for this project in the Babono constituency. And I may take the opportunity to say that there are more communities that I need. There is a Feiwe along the Balata route. There is Foasso along Paris lands. There is other, other communities in, in Bogis. And so there are more, more communities that are in need. I shall stop here for now. But the, one, the next one that's top priority is Feiwe. And we are going to deal with that, that, that project, of course. And of course, you know, I, will, I know you appreciate the fact that I have to bring better life to the people of Babono, and you will continue to work with me on that. So Mr. Hippolyte, in particular, I say to you, um, welcome to Wasco. We at Babono welcome you to Wasco. And of course, we look forward to working with you in the future to make things better for us in Babono. SSDF, you're always welcome. You're like family. And of course, it's always nice to welcome you back. So um, Minister, good to have you in this capacity not as a resident, but in this capacity as minister. And so we look forward to looking at some other projects that we can do while the minister is absent. So once again, everybody, thank you very much for being here. And I look forward to the day that we can open it in the Kako uh, community to speak to the residents and see the other projects, the education projects and sensitization and other th things that we can look at on behalf of residents of Kako and by extension, residents of the Babono constituency. Everybody have a wonderful day. Do not forget, today is World Cancer Day. We're looking at prevention. We're looking at debunking. Mr. Chair, do I have your permission to put a minute, a plug in? Debunking the myths about cancer. There is something that we can do about cancer. We can speak about cancer. We should speak about cancer. There is treatment for cancer, and everybody has a right to treatment, to access care and treatment for cancer. So I want to encourage all seated here. The first phase is prevention. So exercise that well. Manage your health. Eat well. Fruits and vegetables that we do in Babano. Lots and lots of it, lots of water, exercise, avoid obesity and abuse of alcohol, abuse of sugary foods and processed foods. Secondly, get screened, early detection. All men over 40 should go for the prostate exam yearly. All ladies should do their pap smears, should do their breast exams ever so often. If you need help, just take a little walk down the road towards the police station. On the left, there is a health center free of charge. You can access the services. So once again, I wish you a very good day. Remain healthy and of course blessed. I thank you.